Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today is the start of my coverage of all of the Overwatch League rosters for the 2020 season. So this year, of course, be slightly different than what I did last year. I did all these videos again, or I did these last year and do them again this year. But like I said, there'll be some slight differences this year between the way I did it last year. Last year, I didn't cover any rumors or leaks and, uh, when it came to the rosters. Uh, but this year, I'm going to cover some of these leaks and rumors that exist about some of the rosters because I know now better how to um, determine which ones are good and which ones are bad. Um, and I know the people who I can trust. So, um, you know, I'm going to cover stuff from people like Jacob Wolf or uh, Halo of Thoughts. Those are the two people who I've seen a lot of. Um, that get it right and there's some other people too um like slasher if he were to report something like i trust it so i will talk about stuff like that but i'm going to make sure people understand and know when what i'm talking about is uh either an announced change or uh, a rumored change uh, i think it's super important to establish when something is true or when something is um not yet announced to be true other than that it's probably going to be pretty similar to what we saw last year. I'm just going to talk about all the teams. I'll talk about um, how I feel about them. I'm not going to rate them or anything like that. I'm just going to give my thoughts on them. And as we get closer to the season, of course, there will be more power rankings and division breakdowns and stuff like that. The other thing is, of course, it's early. It's only November. Uh, season doesn't start until February. Rosters could change. Uh, teams may sign players or get rid of players between when I talk about them and the start of the season. So this video could be outdated in three hours. This video could be outdated in two weeks. I have no way of knowing yet, uh, but over time, things will probably change. So I'll cover that stuff in the uh, eventually when it comes to it. But for right now, I'm just going to cover uh, the stuff we have in front of us and the stuff we know. For sure. But with that all out of the way, let's jump into talking about the Florida Mayhem. They currently have nine players. Uh, seven of them have been announced. Two of them have not been officially announced. Their announced roster, they have uh, in DPS, they have Saya Player and BQB. For support, they have Chris and Byram. And for tank, they have Fate, Gargoyle, and Korean. This is an interesting roster, I think. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, obviously, we saw them do pretty well in Stage 4 of last season. Not incredible, uh, but pretty well. And what's interesting to me the most uh, is that they chose to hold on to Byram over Hagopun. I thought Hagopun looked very good throughout the season. Uh... Byram never really stood out to me as much as Hagopun did, but maybe I just wasn't watching at that point in time. Hard to tell, really. The other thing that I think uh, stood out to me a lot was Gargoyle. Gargoyle is a very good player in Stage 4 when Hog was meta. Question is, how is he going to be when Hog isn't meta? When Sigma is meta? Or when Diva is meta? Or when Zarya is meta? Like, who, Is he going to perform at the high level that he needs to perform at? Uh, on those other heroes. We haven't seen him on that in the Overwatch League. Um, he's played them in in Contenders and pre-Overwatch League stuff, but we haven't seen him play that in uh, the Overwatch League. So it's a question of how good could he or will he be when he is with the Florida Mayhem in a, in a very good, like a huge meta that isn't just hog in addition of course though to these seven players there's two other players that they have they have yaki from runaway uh who is a dps player uh he would he'll likely take the role that bqb fills so kind of that second dps player he plays some tracer some Fara, some genji some sombra so that's why i expect him to take that bqb role they may split some time i don't know um i expect of course saya player to still play uh, pretty much all the time, if not all the time. Uh, but Yaki could uh, play with him 
uh, and then they may switch between him and BQB, but I think Yaki probably has the starting job over BQB. The other player that they signed is Gangnam Jin, who is a flex support player also from Runaway. So it doesn't make as... Uh, it makes more sense why they don't have Hagapun anymore when they have Gangnam Jin, who will also most definitely start over Byram. Um, Gangnam Jin is very, very good. He's one of the players coming out of contenders that you just go, yeah, he definitely is going to be somebody because why wouldn't he be? He's really good and they're going to have him play wherever they can. So very good player. Very, very, very good player to uh, see. And he'll be a very interesting player to see how he performs on the uh, Florida Mayhem. So these two players obviously bolster this roster. And they improve it a little bit, right? Your tank line is the same, though. You still are going to have Fate and Gargoyle. At least that's my assumption. Korean maybe plays every so often, but Fate is definitely the better main tank on this team. Uh, you know, he played for Team South Korea back in 2018. He was on the LA Valiant that got second overall in the 2018 season. Uh, they traded for him for a lot of players uh, in 2018. So Fate's going to be your starter main tank. And, and he's a good main tank. He's a very solid main tank. He can do his job very well. He knows what he's doing. That There's no real risk in playing Fate. Right? And assuming that these uh, roster moves by... Um, or that were leaked by Halo of Thoughts are true, which I, I have no reason to doubt them. Assuming all that is true, uh, this team, I think, is, is fine in its support line. Though maybe maybe could use a little more uh, in the main support department i think chris is a, is a good player and i think he's the main caller for this team i think that's really the role that he plays on this team but i definitely don't think he's the best uh main support in the league and they definitely could have gotten another one who was better but i think he's the really main caller for this team so i think that's probably why he's still there um but other than than that Right, I don't really know what else they could have uh, gone after and signed. They definitely could have found a good flex tank, uh, I suppose. Uh, come to think about it, there are a lot of good flex tanks that hit the free agent market this off season. You had Neko, you had Hotba, you had Ra Void. Uh, I almost said Roar, but Roar's a main tank. Uh, so there were some really good flex tanks that hit the market this season. They didn't really get any big splash signing for the Mayhem, and I think that is a bit uh, worrisome for this team. I don't think they made that huge signing for a team that's already been uh, the weakest team in the Overwatch League. Hands down, they've been the worst team in the Overwatch League over two seasons. They, went from, they were second to last in the inaugural season. They were last in the second season. And they didn't really improve. Uh, obviously, and I come to look at this team and look at their division. I think it's very tough for them. Uh, you know, Atlanta finished top six last season. They still look pretty good. They even bolstered their roster a little bit. You had Philadelphia finish in the top uh, top twelve. They bolstered their roster a lot, and they look a lot better in my opinion. Uh, you have the Houston Outlaws who finished ahead of them. Didn't finish very far ahead of them. The Houston Outlaws have bolstered their roster, uh, added a lot of good players, added a new head coach. They look really good. And then you also have uh, the Washington Justice, who didn't do a ton of, of, or actually they changed their roster a lot too. Um, got rid of a lot of players, brought in a lot of new players. I don't really know how Washington's going to be. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But this is a division that is going to be very tough for the Florida Mayhem. And I don't think they have brought in enough talent to bring them that extra mile. Now, obviously, there's a chance that there's other players we don't know about uh, that they have signed. It's, it's a very real possibility. Um, we don't know for sure yet that this is their full roster. Uh, things could change. Uh, we don't know if they will yet, but they could. But we, we've seen this roster now and where it is and how it looks. Uh, and I think we can kind of uh, assume that it's going to be decent. I don't know, though, if it's going to be good enough to get into the playoffs. Because I think some of the, some of the teams around them have really been improving especially in their division. And that's what's most important, right? How are the other four teams in your division looking? 
think they all look better than Florida Mayhem do, uh, with the exception of maybe the Washington Justice. But I think it's going to be tough for the Florida Mayhem. I don't know what move I would I would say they should make, um, based on what I know, um, and the you know announcements and, and signings and whatnot. Those really good flex tanks are gone, and maybe Gargoyle will be just fine. Maybe Gargoyle will actually perform really really well, and I won't have to worry about him when the season starts. Maybe something else will be the problem. Because um, Gargoyle looked good on the Roadhog. The risk is just that he only looked good on the Roadhog. We didn't see him really playing other heroes, so we don't know how good he could be. But the, the thing that I'm most worried about with this Florida Mayhem squad is they cannot risk being a bottom team again because they're already not the most popular team in the league. Um, they have a really awful color scheme that people don't really like. Um, people really liked their third kit jerseys because they looked nice because they were actually a good color. Uh, they don't look very nice uh, in their main jerseys. Uh, I've met a lot of people uh, in Florida uh, who are Overwatch League fans. I've met a lot of Florida Mayhem fans. Uh, I went to a Florida Mayhem Grand Finals watch party. I can tell you right here, right now, I saw a lot of non-Florida Mayhem jerseys in there. Uh, and the ones I did see, uh, there were a lot of third kit jerseys I saw. The Florida Mayhem are not the most popular team, and if they have another bad season, in the season that people need to go out and like buy tickets to go see their games in particular, uh, they're going to, I think, struggle to really find their footing in the league because people are going to be like, I don't really care anymore. They have to have a good season. They have to have a better season uh, because it's just it's just unacceptable to have more and more and more bad seasons. You can't just keep being like the bottom team in the league with the way they have played and the way the league is going now. You have to be able to compete. You have to be able to be a much better team. And if you're already probably the most unpopular team in the league, you can't afford to have another season where people aren't going to want to be your fans. So it's a very, very, very big risk this team needs to take. Um, and they definitely need to work towards getting to the point where they are good and they can do everything that they need to do as an organization to be better. But I think it's very important uh, for this team to do everything they can. Now, there's a lot of things that are really interesting with this team and you look at their organization, right? They have Undead as their head coach. Um, and they have gotten rid of Bare Hands uh, as their general manager. Their general manager is now Yeah, who I believe was their assistant general manager before. There's a lot of things that they've done to improve. And I think we're gonna see this team do a lot better in the future because this team is a newer team with a lot of better players. Um, based on where they were at the start of last season. But this team needs to have a very good performance early on. I believe they opened up their season against Houston and then Philadelphia. That's really tough. Um, they play New York after that. They play London. They play Toronto. They play Paris. Those are your first six games. The matches against Houston and Philadelphia are tough, but one in Houston definitely winnable. One in Philadelphia is winnable, but a lot harder. New York can be a very tough match. London's definitely winnable um, based on what we've seen with their roster. Toronto and Paris are a little hard to tell at this point in time, but I think both of those rosters look a lot better. Um, but Paris is probably going to struggle a little bit early on in the season. Um, so just look at the beginning of their season. Florida's going to struggle a little bit, I think. This team I don't love. Uh, I'm not crazy about this team. I don't think they're going to be the worst team in the league. Uh, I think they're going to be better than they were last season. I think they've done enough to improve on what they had, and they're going to be a better team than where they were. Um, there's teams like Boston uh, and the LA Valiant, who I, and even possibly the Washington Justice, who I think are much bigger question marks on where they'll uh, perform and where they'll finish off. Especially a team like the Valiant, when you have to play the Shock and the Titans and the Gladiators, even the Dallas Fuel. Uh, it's a tough division. It's going to be much harder for them to get going um, and, and find all the success that they want to have. This Florida Mayhem squad is better. If you're a Florida Mayhem fan, I think you could be happy about what your team has has put together. 
Um, but I don't think it's it's enough. I think there needs to be more uh, if they want to compete long term. Uh, but that is just me. I, I think this team is, is in a in the right direction. Um, I think uh, another signing or two that are big names, whether they be former Overwatch League players or big names from contenders, I think that would really help this roster be a lot better. I think that helps solidify this roster. I think it would make this roster uh, a much better overall unit. But that's just my thoughts. Everyone has their own thoughts on what's going on. I really like it. I think this this team has started going in the right direction. But there's just a little bit more that they need to do to get better, right? And it's just like one or two people. And I think that's really, really telling of where they are this season compared to where they just started last season. This team's very close. They just need to do a little bit more, I think, in order to cross that hurdle. Um, I don't really know who, though. Uh, so we'll have to see what they do. And obviously, we don't see what's going on behind the scenes. So maybe they are actually, like, clowning on people in scrims. I have no idea. Um, but... I don't think they will be a better team than last season, but I don't know how well they will compete in a tough division uh, in terms of where composition or competition is in terms of relative um, play. And then also in just a very competitive league as a whole where there's not as many wildcard spots this year. Um, the Pacific is still looking very good. Uh, and, you know, only one of San Francisco or Vancouver can win their division. Um, so that's another that's that's a wild card spot. That's you know going to be a little different. So we'll see what happens with this uh, with this Florida Mayhem squad. It'll be interesting to see. I don't know for sure, uh, but I'm excited to see what they do. So those are all my thoughts. If you have your own opinions, whatnot, let me down in the let me know down in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. But that's everything I have today. So thank you for watching and uh, consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.